Hey, what's up YouTube, Bald Screef. I wanted to show how I test for nitrates. Now, I've used the Salifer kit and a couple other ones. In my opinion, this is my favorite kit to test for nitrates. And the biggest reason why is I just think it's the easiest to read. And I wanted to go over, you know, exactly how you use this and exactly how I do it to get a reading. Now, some of the stuff I'm doing, it's a bit overkill, but you gotta keep in mind, this is a hobby grade test kit and the test results are only as good as the person performing the test. So I try to do everything by the book to a T to give consistent, accurate readings. I'm just gonna show you how I do everything and I'll kinda of explain the reasoning behind it and what I feel, at least for me, is the best way to do it. First things first, you have two vials. I put tank water in them, shake them up a bit, and dump it out. If there's any you know, residual residue, it just could create an inaccurate reading. I fill them roughly halfway. I put the cap on, because if you put your finger on there, and you've got some lotion on your hand or sunscreen, I just feel like I can get into the bottle and tamper with it. Plus, I want to rinse the cap off as well. Give it a quick shake. Then I'm gonna go dump these in the sink real quick. That in one. The same in the other. All right, so I actually feel this next step is super important. I actually take the test file I'm not gonna be putting chemicals into and just put it in this foam sleeve. That lets me know that this is the one I'm gonna put the reagents in. Now, I know it seems a little bit dumb, but what has happened to me in the past is I have them side by side. I put some reagent in there, I get a phone call. I look the other way, I come back, and I'm like, crap, which one was I working on? I have to start the test all over. So it helps me keep them separated and prevent that from happening. All right, so the next thing is you're gonna take your liquid. I don't shake it, but I tip it upside down a couple times, make sure it's thoroughly mixed up. And we're gonna put five drops in here. Be really careful because when you go to tip this over, it has a tendency to just pour out, even without any pressure or squeezing. Kind of depends on the temperature, a few other things. So I make sure I tip it over, over the bottom, one, two, three, four, Five. So you can see that one was actually way worse than it normally is. It just started spilling out. Um, so you gotta be really quick and be ready to count and make sure you get to that five because sometimes that happens. Other time I've tipped it over, nothing comes out. I actually have to squeeze the bottle. So just be aware of that. It is very leaky, I guess, sometimes and be ready to count. So then you're gonna cap it and just give it a little swirl. Make sure that it gets mixed up with the solution. That's plenty good. And now we're going to actually put one spoonful, the spoon that comes with it, in here. Now, this is just an extra spoon I have, and what I like about it is it's got just a flat surface where I can actually whoosh, go like that over it to get a nice clean spoonful because it's very easy when you're dealing with these small increments to put a little less or a little too much in there, and I'm trying to be as exact as possible. So with that being said, you know, I put it in my vial, I kind of put it in the middle and then I push it up against the side. Just to kind of push it in there, compact it in. And then you'll see there's actually way more on there on this particular pass than normal. So then I hold it over the vial so I don't waste any. And I use this to scrape the rest back into the vial that I'm not gonna use. And then I have a clean one spoonful. I put it over the vial. Usually gravity will make a fallout. If not, you give it a tap and it'll all kind of fall out at once. Then I cap this file. It's really important in my opinion to have a timer with you. So I got it on my watch and you're supposed to shake it for one minute. So I put one minute on and I start shaking. Now it doesn't say shake for 45 seconds. It doesn't say shake for 90 seconds, 85 seconds. It says 60 seconds, one minute. So. That's how long I shake it for. Okay, it's been one minute. Now another thing I do is I leave the cap on and I put it in the tester. You're supposed to wait five minutes, so I'm gonna put the timer on now for five minutes. It's really important, put that timer on four or five minutes so you can come back and look at it exactly after five minutes. Okay, so once it's been exactly five minutes, I'm going to take a look at the test kit and I'll show you a quick trick is I tap the vial because there's actually some little bubbles that'll form on the bottom of this, and by tapping, it helps get those bubbles to come up to the top, just get an easier reading. And it's best to have really good lighting, you know, daylight's always gonna be the best. And you're gonna move this over to the right until you get the accurate reading. So if we're there, you know, those look to be about the same color. If 
we go one over, now it looks like the top is more yellow than the bottom. So I would say that this is where we're at, which is one parts per million. Now sometimes it's in between to where, hey, the bottom's still a little bit darker than the top, and, you know, but it's not that dark. That's where I would split the difference and say, hey, that's a two, or, you know, use your best judgment. Now, the last thing I do, dump it out, get some RO water, swish it up again, and then I just let it air dry. Now, this is arguably the most important part. You gotta track your results. I know the temptation is, oh, I'll remember, I know what's going on, I'll keep it in my head, but there is so much value in tracking your results. So if you happen to have an apex, they make it super easy for you. They can show you graphs. You know, it may not seem important now, but it might be important later to compare two things. If you don't have the apex, you know, you can just track it on your Google Calendar or any kind of thing. Just write it down on a piece of paper, put it in the, the notes in your phone. But I'm telling you, tracking the date and the time is gonna become important later and you gotta track it. And on three right here, you tell it which system you're using. It was one, boom, press okay, track state time. If you're wondering what should your nitrates be at, that's not a simple question to answer. It's, it's really complicated. The truth of the matter is each tank is gonna like a different nitrate level and that will even change over time. So the biggest things I would say is you wanna make sure you're not at zero. If you run zero for a really long time, you run the risk of getting cyanobacteria and dinoflagellants, which you do not want. Um, so you need to have it off of zero. Don't have zero. It could be anywhere from one to 25. Another big thing that's gonna make a difference is the age of your tank. So if it's a newer tank, you're gonna want lower nitrate levels. Otherwise, algae is going to take over your tank. If it's an older, more established tank, you're gonna see that higher nitrate levels are acceptable because it has other organisms out competing algae. It's already been, you know, colonized, as well as, you know, certain corals are gonna like, maybe color up to your preference differently with higher or lower nitrates, but you don't want zero and you don't want over 25. And if it's a newer tank, you wanna keep it pretty low.